Well, good evening, and welcome to the Midweek Word. You know, there are some storms that arise in our life that cause us to wonder whether we see the sun rise of a new day. But as believers and as children of God, there are certain anchors that we can ground ourselves to, anchors that will keep us through every storm of life. And Paul went through such an ordeal. So let's set the stage on what Paul went through during this stormy time in his life. And I'm going to go to Acts 27, and I'm going to read from the 20th to the 29th verse out of New King James Version. Now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Paul, at this time, he had been arrested, and they were moving him from island to island. And what it was, he was on a ship that they was going through uh, to get him to his final destination. But Paul had already heard from God that you know it would be trouble on this ship. So let, let's let, let, let's continue to read. But after a long absence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, "Men, you should have you should have listened to me." And not have called, not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there I stood by me in the night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all these who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Now, when 14 nights had come, as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it was be 20 phantoms. And when they had gone a little further, they took soundings again and found it was 15 phantoms. Then fearing, least we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. Tonight I want to talk about these four anchors. Four anchors and a desire. You know, throughout this entire chapter, we see that the furrows of the storm had a, had the, the how the storm had affected the ship. If you go back and read the entire chapter, you see how this storm affected the ship. And you know, I was in the military and 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 I was on a very big ship. It was an LPH, a helicopter carrier, and it was going from from Cairo, Egypt to Tunisia, Africa. And we ran into a storm that was, I don't know how a military ship got in such a such a predicament, but the storm was so furious that it was rocking us from side to side or from back to back. And on this large ship and with our technology, technology today, in my mind's eyes, I could see what Paul was going through. On that smaller ship, I could see how, how, how the waves could be, be battling the boat and everybody fearing for their lives. But you know what? Now, it's a different about the boat in the storm as we, as we read the context in, in Acts. The, the storms, and sometimes we go through them storms in our lives. And a lot of times we feel that the only thing we can do is just ride the storm out. And sometimes that all, that's all we can do. But tonight, I want to tell you about four anchors. Four anchors that we can always count on. Because if we have a desire, a thirst, and a righteousness for God, these anchors will always be around. And the first anchor is the presence of God. If we go back to the text in verse 23, and Paul said, For there stood by me in the midst of the night an angel of God. So let's go. I'm going to go to Psalms right quick. And I'm going to read out New King James Version, Psalm 16 and 11. And it says, You will show me the path of life. 
in your presence is the fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Also notice, you know, a lot of times when, when we get in a storm, uh, we find ourselves hiding and, and run away from God's presence. Look at Adam and Eve. Look at Cain. Jonah. You know, we cannot afford to run away from the presence of God because the presence of God is our anchor. You know, in Acts 19, it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, for your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And also in Exodus 33 and 14, I'm going to read a lot of scriptures tonight. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. See, it's always rest in the presence of God. There's always the fullness of joy in the presence of God. So when we're going through these storms, through these raging storms in our life, we can always look back for God's presence because he said he'll never leave or forsake us. And we can hold on. That anchor will hold regardless of what we're going through. The second anchor, the knowledge of God. And Paul said, to whom I belong and whom I serve. See, if we are true children of God and understand who God is and who we are in him, just the knowledge can anchor and carry us through any storm of life. Let's look at 1 John. And it says, New King James Version, We are of God. He knows God. He knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Just think about Matthew. You know, when Jesus came walking on the water, nobody recognized him except for Peter. And once Peter recognized him, he said, Master, if it be you, if it be you, Bid me to come. See, we need to know who God is and who we are in him. The next one, the word of God. If we go back to verse 24 in, 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 in the scripture reading, it says, saying, do not be afraid. Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all these who say it with you. When we get a word from God, we need to stand on that word. Because God is not a man that he should lie. God will honor his word. He said God watched over his word to perform it. See, Paul not only, not only had the presence of God and the knowledge that, that, that who he served, but he had the utter confidence that what God had told him would surely come to pass. No, in verse 25, it says, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe, for I believe that it will be just as he told me. See, it's that confidence we have in God. Matter of fact, let's go to Hebrews 6, 17 and 19. Again, out of New King James Version. Y'all write these scriptures down. Keep up with them. Thus God determined to show more abundant, abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. Confirm it by oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible, it is impossible for God to lie. If we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, but sure and steadfast and which enters the presence behind the veil. An anchor for the soul. See, when we have the word of God, we're anchored in that word. The next one, the will of God. And in the reading, verse 26, it says, However, we must run aground on a certain island. See, God had purpose in Paul of being cast upon the island of Melita. It was there that the viper would have a harmless bite to Paul 
And it will be revealed to all the people that's around him, all the barbarians, that Paul was no criminal, but a man of God. And at that time, on that island, there was a great outbreak of revival. Because God knew. God always has a purpose for sending us through the storms. We may, we may not see the destination that he has in mind for us, but we can rest assured that he knows what and where he's sending us to. Look at Jeremiah. Everybody know the scripture. For I know the thoughts. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And also Hebrews 10 and 35. Let me read this out of New King James Version. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. We've heard that so often. Do not cast away your confidence, which is the great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. When you have done the will of God. See, God's will is always an anchor for us. Regardless of what we're going through, if we trust him and know that what his will is for our life, a total and complete confidence of the will of God also serves as a sure anchor that we can lean on through the darkest of storms. Whatever comes in our life, we know that we can lean on the will of God. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is the desire. We have to have a desire to see God. In Psalms 130, Psalm 1 and 30 and 6, I'm going to read our New King James Version again. My soul waits for the Lord more than those that watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. My soul waits for the Lord. And in Isaiah 26, 89. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is that your name and for your remembrance of you, with my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world would learn righteousness. We have to have a hunger and a desire for God. See, when we have that hunger and that desire, and we seek God with all our heart, then these four angles, his presence, the presence of God that will keep us, the knowledge of God that will maintain us, the word of God that we can have trust and faith in, and the will of God, will carry us through every situation as long as we have keep that desire. It doesn't matter what type of storm that you're going through. You may be going through a storm, a stormy marriage. You may have relationships that, that you don't just you just don't know which way they're going. You might have trouble at the job, your employment. You might be going through a financial storm or sickness, disease whether it's physical or whether it's spiritual. If you have a desire, a hunger, and a thirst for God, these anchors will hold. And you can rest assured that you'll find yourself still afloat when the storm is over. God will keep us anchored with his word, with his presence, with his will, and with the knowledge we have of him. We're always anchored, regardless of what we're going through. It might seem, might seem bleak, but if we hold on to those four anchors and keep that desire and, and a thirst and, and a thirst and a hunger for righteousness, God will always see us through, regardless of the storm. I hope you got something from the word tonight. Just a nugget to get you over the midweek hump. Don't forget this weekend, we have the joint service with Freedom, Freedom, Freedom Fellowship. Barclay County Calvary. Doors open at 9, service start at 10, and this week it's a special baptism service. So we expect to see you Sunday. So we look forward to it. Have a blessed evening.
and enjoy the rest of your week. And I'm going to leave a little something with you. I'm a, uh, it's, a, it's a little song that, that took me through this week that gave me the uh, that gave me this message. And I think it will bless you. Let it bless your spirit. Good night. And we love you. And we'll see you on Sunday. I have journeyed Through the long dark night Out on the open sea My faith alone Ah!